They took one look at me and they said, yeah, you're, you're not going home tonight. We have to figure out what this is. Uh, I was doubled over in pain, vomiting, nauseous. You know, I had to call my wife. She was out playing tennis. I had to call her to, to, to come back and, and take me to the hospital. I got readmitted. Um, they did a CT scan at that point where they saw something. Uh, I got diagnosed on uh, January 13th of uh, 2022 uh, with, with pancreatic cancer. So that's uh, what they call pancreatic adenocarcinoma. And I was right here in my house in Avon. The uh, doctor called, which is kind of never good news. Uh, you know, when that when the doctor calls you after the procedure, uh, and he confirmed um, that, that I had pancreatic cancer. Uh, so, you know, he calls around two o'clock in the afternoon. You know, it's kind of one that you want to um, share and uh, talk about from, you know, from a, with your support group kind of right away. And um, I didn't really have that opportunity. I didn't want to call my wife right away because she's in the middle of moving my daughter uh, into the dorm and everything. So um, it was it was a pretty traumatic experience. Everything kind of comes crumbling down, but at the same time, bec it becomes the central focus. And wrapping your mind around it at first is is um, <laughs> challenging. Oh, it was a pity party. Uh, you, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, in your head, you, 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 you your life's changed, right? This curtain's been ripped open. Um, you, you know, you've, you've been given this devastating news that, that doesn't really have a, you know, a good track record of survival. From a mental standpoint, it is tough because, you know, look, I'm 53 years old. You still want to have a lot of memories uh, with them. You still want to do a lot of things with them. I still want to do a lot of things with my wife. Um, you know, kind of confronting this uh, from a mental standpoint was a, was a real hard thing. And, you know, one thing I would advocate for is, and the one thing I did at the beginning of my journey was, I found a therapist. Honestly, I think as a caregiver, I probably waited too long to reach out to a mental health professional. I did see how it was helping Jay. And once I did uh, have that support, things did get a, a lot easier. You know, it's not just dealing with getting the, you know, the, going through the chemotherapy and the chemo radiation, but it's dealing with the mental struggle and the mental aspects of, of battling this disease. But what, what I think I've gained is a much deeper appreciation for life. So, you know, I've, I've gained that or I've reconnected with that. I find much more meaning and joy in the little things in life, you know, in just the simple pleasures. Like one of the things I'll do on these sunny days in Connecticut when it starts to warm up is just go out in the driveway and, and, and put my head up and just let the sun come down on my face and the breeze go over my face. And, and those are just powerful things for me right now. The journey in some ways has been a blessing in disguise. Our family is closer. We value each other. A perspective on life. I was bound and determined that I'm gonna beat this disease. And my attitude is gonna be one for advocacy, finding the best people that are gonna help me do this, get myself a great team, and surround yourself with a great support group. I viewed it as I was going to work. I packed my lunch, I bought it in a, in a, in a, in a lunch pack, and you know, my view was I was going to work. I was gonna start this chemotherapy, and I was gonna start killing this disease um, inside me. And you know, my attitude was I wasn't gonna let this win. And I surrounded myself with people that felt the same way. I was by his side every day that I could. And the one day he woke up and he the first time he could actually physically reach for my hand was the moment I knew. That was the turning point that I knew that he was gonna make it out of there. Um, I responded very well to, the, I, I did eight cycles, so I did what was called neoadjuvant chemotherapy and chemo radiation, so uh, prior to surgery to basically shrink uh, the, 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 uh, the, the tumor. Um, I responded very well, the tumor shrunk. My oncologist thought that, you know, by the time they opened me up, he actually thought it would be dead. I hope for a world in which early detection 
um, becomes much more available. My hope is that they find an ultimate cure or at least an early diagnostic uh, test uh, for this disease. That's, that's my true hope for this. You know, my dreams are to, to, to see my kids grow and to be part of their life and to help shape them. My hope and dream is to be a part of that and to help them when they need advice or help them when they need a hand um, as well. And, and, and honestly, you know, one of my, you know, one of my hopes and dreams is, again, if people hear this message and they're affected by it, for me to help them and to, and to give them guidance, uh, or at least my story more in depth, um, that, 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 that can help and inspire them and give them hope.